Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 24th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Nevada, Las Vegas. Well, we got some interesting diaries to start out with. The first one actually is based on a report we got originally from a reader. The reader noticed that his firewall, of all things, was doing DNS lookups for malicious domain names. So he was suspecting that the firewall may be compromised. What actually happened was that this firewall loaded a block list of domains to which it was supposed to block connections. But well, firewalls don't really block connections to host names, they block connections to IP addresses. So in order to do its job, the firewall had to look up the IP addresses associated with these host names in order to be able to block them. Well, in the end, a false positive, but an interesting one. Of course, if your firewall is actually more an HTTP proxy, then it will actually filter host names and not just IP addresses. And the second diary was from Manuel. Manuel looked at some mobile applications and one in particular that actually used users' fingerprints to authenticate. Now, if you do that, there are a couple different ways to do it. You could use the APIs that your mobile device offers and use the built-in fingerprint reader. That usually doesn't send any information to the actual other side. It just authenticates the user locally on the phone. In this case, however, the fingerprint image, which was actually sent to the remote API. Problem here, that connection wasn't properly protected. Man in the middle was possible. If you're using TLS uh, between APIs, then what you really have to do is some form of certificate pinning or verifying that the certificate was signed by the proper certificate authority if you want to remain a little bit flexible. But in this case, it was possible to insert a proxy into the connection and collect the data that was transmitted in this case, a complete image of the fingerprint. And the Zero Day Initiative released limited details about a so far unpatched vulnerabilities in Microsoft's Jet database engine. The Jet database engine is included in a number of Microsoft products. Now, the vulnerability here is a little bit limited in the sense that in order to exploit it, the attacker has to provide a malicious Jet database engine file and then convince the victim to actually read this file. So this is nothing very like SQL injection or anything like this, where an attacker could just send malicious data to an application and then wait for it to be processed. Instead, the actual database file has to be manipulated. No word from Microsoft yet as to a patch. I guess we can assume that something may be forthcoming in October. And Western Digital has released a hotfix for the rather unfortunate authentication bypass vulnerability that I talked about last week. So if you're using any of these drives, please apply that hotfix and still don't expose it directly to the internet because there are probably a couple of similar flaws waiting to be discovered. And according to bleeping computer job ads on websites like Fiverr are apparently being used to spread malware. This is actually quite tricky to recognize for the victim. The victim often expects the user to send along things like PDF and other attachments with designs that are supposed to be produced, for example, by the job taker. Well, uh, in this case, these documents that are attached to to the job offer then include malware. We have often seen in the past things like unsolicited resumes that you may be receiving, including malware. This sort of turns this around a little bit and does actually attack the person looking for a job, not the one offering a job. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.